Welcome to Contracting Conversations. My name is Scott Williams, and I'm joined by my co-host, Jim Valley. Today, we are talking with Mark Jenkins, DAU's Learning Asset Manager for the DAU Provisioning Clause Matrix. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, guys. It's fun to be back here. Yeah, nice to see you, Mark. Thanks. Absolutely. Hey, Mark, we get a lot of conversation about the uh, clause matrix in our class, the Con 1400. And I know you have a wonderful video out there uh, on our DU tools page talking about this matrix, but uh, what can you do to just kind of get us started off on the conversation about the provisioning clause matrix, how it came about, and what your role is in maintaining it? Yeah, sure. So the DAU provision and clause matrix um, actually was born quite some time ago, uh, probably more than, uh, I'm guessing probably around eight years ago uh, by a gentleman here at DAU by the name of Don Mansfield, uh, a brilliant connoisseur of all things FAR and DFARS. And I think it's, I think at some point he thought, you know, there needs to be a better way for contracting professionals to filter through just the mountain of provisions and clauses that are out there. And so he he started toying around with this tool that he started building, uh, which is essentially an Excel spreadsheet uh, where he put the, he listed the all of the provisions and clauses from the FAR and the DFARS. Um, and he really put a lot of work into this. And then he had the different categories like um, well, let me just uh, reference this real quick, but he would have different categories that you can filter by, like contract type, contract purpose, contracting method, and some other things. And he said, if there's a way that we can filter out all of those things that don't belong, it would make the process of selecting provisions and clauses so much more effective and efficient. And so he kind of had this idea and he put it in, he he put it in place. Um, and the first model of it was relatively crude, right? It was a, it was kind of a little simple tool that he introduced to students way back in the day, like in the con in the con 90 days. Um, you know, when students would come and learn about the FAR, he'd say, hey, there's this really cool tool. Here you go. If you want to use it, you can use it. Well, it gained proliferation a little bit from there and more and more people started using this and, it, and to the point where he actually uh, made it an official tool on the DAU website. Now, Don left us at DAU probably about, oh God, I want to say three or four years ago. Um, and he passed the tool on to me. And I was a fan of it. And I was very happy to become the learning asset manager for this tool. Um, because I was aware of how effective it was. And my goal in taking over the management of this tool was just simply to continue these upgrades to the tool, almost the same way that you upgrade your iPhone or your, you know, your Android at night, right? It's like, hey, here's version 12.1, here's 12.2, 12.3, 12.4. I mean, we, we continuously upgrade this, uh, this tool um, and we, and we publish it at a rate of uh, two times a month out there on dau.edu. That, that process of updating the tool involves looking at the federal register notices that come out daily and then uh, seeing if they affect any provisions and clauses. And then if they do, we go into the tool. We actually will add or remove or will update uh, the specific provision or clause. We'll state whether it's applicable to those certain contracting categories so that when a user downloads this, they can more easily filter out those clauses they don't, don't need. But what's so great about it is that, um, like I said, it's been through so many upgrades at this point that compared to where it started with Don Mansfield back in the day and where it is now, it's really a powerful and prolific tool in the contracting professional's toolbox. One thing I notice, Mark, uh, when Scott and I teach Con 1400, is that the students really had difficulty with flowdowns, and that that tool really helps in that aspect. And I think that's one thing that you just don't get from the far, the far, you know, the matrix out there. You don't get the flowdowns. Is that true? That's true. Yeah. So the smart matrix out there on acquisition.gov, um, it's not bad. It's not a bad tool, but 
the DAU provision in clause matrix has some significant advantages. The flow down filter is certainly one of them. Um, but we also have a filter for, you know, for like dollar value. Is it is it below or equal to the simplified acquisition threshold? You can filter by that. But I'll tell you, in my opinion, what is the single greatest aspect of the uh, matrix here is that <clears throat> we include the prescriptions for the provisions and clauses. Um, so imagine that you're trying to figure out which clauses apply and you just see the you just see the clause or prescription number and it says a for apply and you're like oh well i need to read the prescription well guess what in this matrix you do not have to like get out of that screen and go and like search up the prescription and read it there and then go back to the matrix it's all in one place so it's very 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 convenient and like i said we keep those prescriptions and everything updated and this is this is certainly a tool that we keep very sharp because we know how much it matters to um, to the defense acquisition workforce in, in the contracting realm. We even have industry partners who utilize this tool. Well, this is the first tool we've actually had a recording on that we've done a video on, and and mm. the reason being is we believe this is probably the one of the best tools there is out there that people go out to DAU tools. We're gonna look at other ones and we're gonna do recordings on those, but this one is the one that probably a lot of people are utilizing. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I can give you a little bit of data on a lot of people. <laughs> so um, I actually looked at the DAU media tab and the instructional video for the DAU provision and clause matrix has been viewed over 17,500 times. That's significant for a DAU tool, very significant. Now, what's funny is the tool also has four hearts, which is also significant for a DAU tool. If you can get one heart on a contracting tool, you're good. But anyway, um, it's just, it's clear that it's a prolific tool. Um, and in fact, uh, about a year ago, you know, I was actually contacted by some folks at DPC asking if asking about the tool because it had gained so much proliferation that they were considering um, they were debating on whether or not it should be the tool for clause and provision um, selection. Um, and I didn't hear much more from that, but it it's gotten that much attention. People are using it so actively that. You know, it, it's becoming something that's been, uh, you know, this kind of a game changer. Hmm. Well, Mark, like you said, there's so much uh, good information on the tool. And for folks out there who haven't yet watched the video, uh, when you do watch it, it really does take you through the how to use the tool to tailor for your needs. And uh, it is wonderful instruction. And once you watch it, you'll have a lot better mastery of how to actually use the uh, the tool itself and i think like mark said the, the biggest thing for mm -hmm. folks out there is that the prescription is there so you can go and read it for yourself you can take a look at it but that extra work of somebody you know reading that prescription and then applying it to flow down and showing that on the matrix is something you can access is wonderful it's a wonderful time saver as opposed to using the the tool in the far that takes you to a certain extent and you can tailor that as well, but it doesn't show you, as Jim said, the flow downs to the subcontractors. So that is a big time saver instead of the CEOs and contract uh, administrators and negotiators out there trying to read every single provision for every single clause and to try to figure it out, which you could do. It just would take you a long time to do it. So this DAU tool has saved a lot of time and effort by doing that work for you. And again, as Mark said, the prescription is right there in the tool, so you can certainly read it and interpret as you need to is there for you but they've done the work when it comes to the flow down so that you don't have to do it so that's what makes it, i think so very valuable and I'm sure so popular uh to users out there because it is very tailorable to your needs as mark has, has explained so uh, again i don't want to don't want you to skip watching that video I'd, i hope that you watch this podcast out there folks and and watch the video between the two of them i think it'll do a, a long way to explain how you can use this tool and what it's for awesome Great. thank you so mark is there anything else you want to mention on this tool before we uh, let you go i i guess what i i guess kind of the final thought as i would say is that <clears throat> you know 
it's very important that we do not remove the human element from this process. Um, this tool is meant to make the process more efficient. It does not remove the due diligence of a contracting professional to read prescriptions and accurately apply um, provisions and clauses. What it does is it takes the over 1600 provisions and clauses um, between the FAR, the DFARs, and even agency supplements, and it will allow you to filter down to a relative handful. But once you have that relative handful, you are still going to have to go and read the prescriptions. You're going to have to make sure that they're accurately applied. But the good news is, is you don't have to do that for near as many. So hopefully it can be a, uh, a good tool for you out there. Thanks, Jim. All right. Great. Thanks so much, Mark. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about your background. My background. Um, let's see here. How far back are we going? <laughs> no, I'm talking about the <laughs> <laughs> the background in your yeah the background in your video you know that you're oh this yes <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 gotcha right so I was like well let's see I went to uh, Providence Elementary School okay all right <laughs> so this this background if you don't know where this is this is actually in Arches National Park Utah which is where I'm from which is where I telework from um, not from Arches I telework from you know my home but I think you guys understood that. But anyway, this is in Arches National Park. And for those of you who don't know, this is also the beginning scene of one of my favorite movies, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So if you remember the scene where uh, Indiana Jones is a young boy scout, and he goes and he's and he's uh, and he goes into that cave and, and those people and, and, and the guy with the hats there. Um, that's where this scene that's where this scene was filmed. And so I always personally feel that Indiana Jones is a Yukon. Um, I know that I don't have any like good basis for that other than this, but anyway, that's that's the background there. Okay, great. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully have you again back someday. So thank you for coming on again. Yeah, no, right. thanks. It's fun. All awesome. right. So for everyone else uh, watching this, uh, that's all for this session for today. So if you could, uh, please sign up for our contracting conversations channel on YouTube or DAU Media or Apple Podcasts and include any questions you have. We are definitely going towards a different stage of our podcast and we really need your questions to help us to look at what do you guys really want to know. So please, uh, if you have any questions, put them on there. And uh, we will see you next time. Look forward to having future contracts and conversations with you.